fighting. Here's a 101 on lighting. Here's six 12 volt bulbs, and uh, one is wired in series, much like your old Christmas tree lights, where it goes into one side of the bulb and out the other. And when one goes out, they all go out. The other ones are parallel, each drawing 12 volts from the leads. The difference is that the, in series, they only burn at 4 volts each. And in the bottom series, they burn at 12 volts each. So in order to get dim light, particularly with street lights or, or, or uh, lamps on the platform or something like that, it's, it's best to uh, wire them in series to cut the, the voltage down so you don't over apply voltage. Next one, please. Here's a case in point. The station had a, a number of these platform lights, and uh, that's on the left is how it looks to the viewer. On the back is how it looks to the guy that's putting the bulbs in. Um, I found that those the, the globes are like pearls, and uh, I found I could bore a hole in, in them because they're just plastic, of course. And uh, I put a grain of sand bulb down each one to light them up. And one leg of the, the bulb was soldered, was glued to the casting, and the other leg of the wire was brought down to the back of the post to be hooked up. So then if I wanted to light the bulb, I'd put one wire on the brass tubing, which helps support and locate the platform lights and then one wire from the wire and it should light. I'm a little bit paranoid to, to see if it works, but uh, and so far I haven't, but it's coming. Next. Here's a, a way of making Campbell street lights work. I wrote an article on this a few years ago too. It, um, you, you replace the, the column with a, a one eighth inch brass rod, uh, tubing rather, and uh, just bore a hole in the bulb support and in the base and extended down below the, the base for making sure you locate it so it doesn't fall over. And you have to bore a hole in the prism too for the bulb to fit and maybe a little bit in the cap if the bulb has a little point to it. But uh, those work. Next one, please. And you see I grabbed this slide, but I didn't have any lights, street lights or platform lights lit. But that's a night scene in Mystic. Next one, please. This is the, the freight house where, where, see that door? That's the light shining through the door. This kit was given to me, so I, I, in order to fix that, I'd take the door out, put a piece of cardstock behind it uh, so it wouldn't shine through the, the door. There's my styrene house. I found a spot between the grocery store and the freight house. So don't throw anything out, even though you can't use it in the, in the prescribed spot. Next one, please. Here's Appleman's. Here's your inter interior detail. The amount of time I spent on making that detail, it was well worth it because it just took me minutes to do. Next one, please. Here's Amy Stills. Next one, please. This is the uh, passenger station and the, and the freight platform. Next one. Signs. You, to say that the value of signs is an understatement. You should undervalue the value of signs. I bet you use 
saw plenty of signs since you got up this morning until you, you got here, and you, you can't even remember all the signs you saw. There's a great value in, um, in signs. You can establish an era. If uh, I have a billboard on my layout ever, advertising the, the average virtues of a Model T Ford, and that is a 1925 Ford, so that pegs my era as 1925. Uh, I have another sign on a building in Deep River, and it outside it says hotel, which means that building is a hotel. And it says Deep River over it means it's, it's in Deep River, so I got two for one for that sign. So you, you can't undervalue the meaning of signs. Next one, please. Now, you can make your own signs by getting these letter sets. You can get them from art stores or probably uh, complete stationery stores. I like the second one in where you can apply them and you can change the color of the sign by, if you don't go outside the lines, of course, and uh, make another sign. But you can change the color of any of these signs. I won't go into it, but technically what you do, if you want a yellow sign, you start off with a yellow piece of cardboard or paper. You put down the lettering you want, but you don't burnish it. And then you spray something over that, which is whatever color you want. It could be red over yellow. And then we scotch tape after everything is dry, lift the lettering up, and now you have red over yellow, and you got the yellow lettering. Next one, please. Wales Junction sent me a, Carl Schultz started Wales Junction, and he had signs for every category, you know, soda fountains, uh, automotive, a whole host of things. And that was, black and white ones that when I made the Ginz and uh, Ginz sign on the, on the grocery. Next one, please. For your contemporary models, all you have to wait till Sunday and you have a whole host of signs coming toward you. Uh, I would ask, suggest that you to be sign conscious, get a, a cardboard box and if you see a sign, clip it out, put it in a box. You may not use it right away, but you might not use it for 10 years. But you come back and you see the sign, and yeah, I can use that. And I thought it was nice that the Quaker folks published theirs in all the popular scales. They had O scale, S, H, O, and N. <laughs> but I put that in for a little joke, but there is really no scales of signs unless you're talking about street signs, like stop signs or yield signs. Uh, a, a big sign in HO with a small one in, in O scale. And you can interchange them. You, you can use an O scale sign if you want a big sign on the side of the building. Next one, please. Now, I said that we're going to talk about preparation of signs. Back in 1925, it wasn't unusual for a guy to go around with a long handled brush with stiff bristles and a bucket of paste. and. If a circus was coming to a town, or a new movie was coming to town, he was at, obliged to put him up wherever he could find a, a spot. So what we've got to do is simulate that. This is uh, my drafting tape again, which uh, I use exclusively for this stuff. This is a sign out of uh, Fine Scale Miniatures sign set. And it's a piece of sandpaper. That's all we need. Next one, please. Now I put a piece of tape down right in the center of the sign on the back. And the reason for that is so you won't, as you're doing, going through the next process, bore a hole in the sign. Next one, please. So you, you start in the center of the sign is, and, you, and you go in one direction, wearing away the paper in the back. And when you start to see the blue or the colors of the sign coming through, that's when you stop unless you want a, a sign that's been up for quite a while and you want a ragged edge to it. Next one, please. So, that's what you end up with. And you take that piece of tape off and maybe give it a couple more swipes and then you're all set, ready. Next one. 
Now here's the same sign on the same wall. This is the one, the way I just described, this is the one that comes right out of the sheet. And this one looks, you can see the brickwork showing through the back because it's so thin now. And it looks like it was rolled right on there. This one looks like it's either a cardboard or a metal sign on the side of the building. But the, the Ginz Brothers was was the one that uh, I particularly am pleased with because that went right around the clapboards. I started with that sanding process and I put it up there and I put it up under the eaves and then I stroked it out and I went down one clapboard and I had a straight edge and I put it, tucked it under the clapboards again until it was all done and it came out pretty good. Next one, please. Here's a sign that was on the side of Amy's dry goods. It was a green building. I'm always changing color to the buildings. And I decided to make it brick color. You can see the green in places around. And it had this sign on it. And I started peeling it away and it wasn't getting anywhere. So I, I got a, some coarse sandpaper and a block of wood and I started going back and forth sanding as I sanded it off. And I stopped and I said, gee, that looks pretty good. We've been up for a while. So I stopped and Probably the Zeppelin bread is 15 cents a loaf now from when that sign went up. So some things happen by, by accident. Next one, please. Here's, I make my own cross buck signs. I know you can buy them cheap enough, but uh, they're usually out of plastic. They're usually pretty heavy. And the, the lettering is jet black. And if anybody has seen these cross bucks, the first thing they go is the lettering gets faded by the sun and it gets grayer and grayer. And um, so I can control that on my computer. I just put these in, the, in Excel and put them across, and put them on a, a, a post and put them right by the main line or the track. This sign is valid because the road here goes across the bridge and so does the train. They both share the same bridge. Train <coughs> obviously had the right of way, so you had to watch out for trains. And I highlighted it with a magic marker to draw attention to it. Now, and it looks much much like that. So, the um, I made it to, to look like it's been around for a few years. A few cans of oil to grease the gears, but otherwise, it's on its own. A small platform to unload heavy object from a flat car or something like that. Next one, please. This is the um, freight house, which is the busiest part of Mystic. A lot of stuff comes and goes from here, and uh, it's a beehive of activity. Next one. Across the tracks is um, King Cole. It's the structure I made when I was about 16 years old, and I didn't have the feel for scale size. These, these rocks for the foundation are bright boulders, and these bands are very heavy. But um, I still put it right down in the front of the, la of the scene and uh, used it. Next one, please. Here's Appleman Woodwork with piles of Atlas makes these this lumber piles, or they make a single layer, and you can, you can stack them as high as you want. And it, it looked like wood, so I said, gee, why should I make a lot of problems with losing up strip wood, you know, and I can get these right out of the box. So that's what I did. Next one, please. There's a little few weeds and cans are starting to collect around Amy's uh, dry goods. Next one. Oh man, Ginn's got all his fruits and vegetables out on the walk today. And he's got a, a scale there. He's selling stuff right, right off the front of the walk. Next one, please. This is a railroad avenue structure. I don't know if you remember these. Well, it was all epoxy. The windows and wall are all one piece. And uh, they had a unique look to them. All this design was built in. Even the sway in the roof was built in. 
and there was a sh shingle roof that leaked apparently. So now this side and then all with the other side is all corrugated, rusted corrugated iron to, to prevent the leak. And so I named it Tame and Brothers Garage for my grandson Ben and Matt. This guy is having trouble with his car. I wrote an article for Inner Gage Gazette on that one. Next one, please. So here we are. Here's, here's our focal point. And uh, the back, I want, want to point to the distant houses, how it looks good from this point. Next one, please. It looks good from this point, too. Next one, please. And it looks okay from here, too. So the way you place them and, and the way what you do with the background structures is what is important so that they look in, in any direction uh, like they should. Next one, please. Here's a, a track in the streets and um, I, I cut and fitted uh, cardboard that was first, I had glue, glued on some sand on the, on the cardboard and, and, and cut and fit that thing. But there's an easier way, putting a piece of paper down, taping it on either end, and then going with uh, the lead on an angle and uh, over the rail and, and tr tracing every rail. That way you can glue it right to the cardboard and have a nice fit. Next one, please. There's Perkins Prados. He's a little bit nervous about the leaning towers, but and there's Mangini and Son doing the sign change. Next one, please. Couple. This is, this, is, this is the last slide. These are the problem. You wouldn't think anybody who has 50 years of modeling experience would have any problem at all putting this, this scene together, but I, I do, and, and you're going to have some problems too, but it's up to your own resourcefulness and ingenuity to get around them. The grocery store had a rough line that had to be altered. Stone foundation had to be added. The styrene house didn't fit. Another one had to be built. Two industry buildings were added. One eliminated. The queen house was painted green, color change. The shed in the background house had to be extended. Amy's dry good changed color. The sign couldn't be removed, painted around the sign, which was a, happened to be a, a blessing. And Mystic Bank and Case building shape modified. There's probably a couple more in there I couldn't remember, but uh, that, that's, uh, I pointed these things out because uh, you're going to come across the same thing when you do, if you try to do the same thing. Okay.